What is up, brothers and sisters? Welcome to the Mitch Grace Show. Thanks for listening again today. We're doing something a little different for those that are listening to the podcast. We're actually streaming today live on Instagram. We haven't done that too much and want to do more of that in a moment type creation. So welcome. If you're live on Instagram, thanks for checking out the Mitch Grace Show. Please subscribe anywhere that you listen to podcasts. Um, I am your host, Mitch Gray, and I am a small business and leadership consultant, author of the new book, How to Hire and Keep Great People. So make sure you go order your copy of How to Hire and Keep Great People anywhere that you can order books. Um, the reviews we're getting are amazing and people are loving this book, the practicality of it, it's easy to read. And, and in this book, how to Hire and Keep Great People. I teach you how to recruit all-stars, how to hire all-stars, how to develop all-stars, and how to be a leader that really leads from what I call your humanity. So subscribe to The Mitch Gray Show anywhere you listen to podcasts. Go order my new book, How to Hire and Keep Great People. You'll love it, I promise. So on today's episode of The Mitch Gray Show, we are going to talk about the real reason that people work. Yes, there are real reasons other than what you may think as a business leader or whatever your position is. There are reasons other than what you may think are reality. Um, and I know this because when I watch businesses and leaders advertise for jobs, for instance, in my local town, I was uh, walking around today, headed to lunch, and stores had you know now hiring signs up on their front doors which isn't a bad idea the problem is you're never going to find great people that way i shouldn't say never rarely are you going to find great people with a sign on your door that says now hiring the way you're going to find great people is to understand the real reasons people work to have clarity on who and why you need to hire and then to go find them it's just like Fishing, one of the, my favorite activities that I love to partake in. You have to be strategic. You have to know what you're fishing for. You have to know where to fish. And you can't just sit in your cabin in the mountains and hope the fish swim out of the water and crawl on the land and, and plop into the frying pan or however you like to prepare your fish. It's not going to happen. You have to know where, how, and then you have to go. You have to take action. So today I'm going to prepare you on this episode of The Mitch Gray Show of why you're taking action because you have to have some knowledge of why people actually work. Guess what, friends? Here's a secret. It's not for benefits. It's just not. Um, can benefits lure people in? Sure. But benefits will never keep people, especially high-performing people. So let's, let's take a look at the big picture of the real reason people work. There's a story being told. There's a story being told every day. We can see it through the data. We can see it by what people are saying. And if you're a great leader, you're going to be listening to your people and the story they're telling you. You're going to be taking note of that story. But I'm going to talk about data for a few minutes because this is data that's industry-wide. It's worldwide. It, it cuts across cultures and industry. This is the human story in the workplace. Are you ready? More than 50% of organizations globally have difficulty retaining their employees. So over half of organizations globally have a real difficult time keeping people. It's what I call the conveyor belt industry. And when you read my book, How to Hire and Keep Great People, or you read any of my content, you will know that I have a rule. When people are leaving your work, when people are choosing to quit and move on, that's a you problem, not a them problem. That's what I call the rule of reflection. When I was leading teams, when I was hiring and moving on from people, if anyone ever left outside of legalities, the first thing I did was usually literally go to the restroom, look in the mirror and say, what could I have done differently? So if that's happening to over 50% of organizations and it's a major issue, then we have a lot of leadership issues that we need to dive into. 49% of HR and hiring managers identify that better training programs are their number one need. 
So if you're listening to the show or you're watching us on LinkedIn, and you're a hiring manager, or you're a small business owner, or you're a department manager, or you're an HR person, you're probably going to reflect with that, right? Connect with that. You're probably gonna reflect on the struggles you have. And one of your number one issues is not having good enough and satisfactory enough training programs. Guess what, friends? That's a leadership problem. Having poor training programs is a direct reflection of poor leadership. That can be changed. That's the good news. 73% of companies revamp their onboarding to improve employee retention. Okay, so what is that story telling us? What it's telling us is a business has a conveyor belt of people. People are coming, accepting jobs, leaving within six months. And so the first solution, 73% of companies, their first solution is to go, oh, we need to change our onboarding because our onboarding is going to fix our problems. 73% are basically identifying onboarding as the issue. They're probably getting feedback from employees leaving. They're probably getting feedback from department managers. But really, this is kind of a backwards way of thinking. If your people are getting hired, accepting a job, and leaving within six months, you don't have an onboarding issue. Now, your onboarding is probably messed up, but you have a recruiting and a hiring issue. You're probably not doing a very good job recruiting, so you're just waiting on people to show up. You're probably not hand-selecting the people that you're hiring. And then when you do hire people, you're not setting them up for success within the first couple of weeks of being in that position. And most importantly, you're probably not aligning people to sit on the right seat in the bus. In other words, you're only aligning people based on experience or education rather than personality and ability and passion and excitement. Those are very different things. And interestingly enough, oftentimes education and experience don't align with one's passion, excitement, and interest. So you've got to be a creative leader. You've got to be a leader that is leading from humanity and not from what a piece of paper says. Forget the piece of paper for a little bit. One third of new hires quit their job after about six months. What that tells us is people don't know how to hire. That's the bottom line. <laughs> people just don't know how to hire. And unfortunately, in today's world, people aren't hiring themselves. In other words, they're not doing it personally. They're not hand selecting and recruiting. Instead, they're depending on third party apps or agencies to do the hiring for them. Here's the challenge with that. Third-party apps and agencies don't know your culture. They've never experienced your culture. They don't know who you are as a leader. There is no algorithm that exists that can paint the picture of your culture. And sure, these third-party apps can advertise. I heard an advertisement on the radio the other day that they'll make sure they pick the right people for you. But picking the right people for you is only based on the information those people give that website. It's not based on what you've seen in action or why you've recruited that person or the needs of your team or a cultural match. It's, it has nothing to do with that. And so, so, so often, even small, really small businesses are dependent on third-party apps and agencies. And that, my friends, is a critical mistake, a critical mistake. Four out of five business leaders rank employee retention as important or urgent. I'm going to say that again. Four out of five business leaders rank employee retention as important or urgent. So what they're saying is leaders know that employee retention is unbelievably important. It can cost up to 200% of someone's salary to replace them. 200%. What I tell business leaders constantly is if you want to increase your revenue instantly, learn how to recruit and hire the right people. It'll change everything because you won't have as much turnover and you'll actually have high performers in. So you're going to decrease your cost by hiring the right people. You're going to decrease your cost because you're decreasing turnover and you're going to raise performance because you're hiring higher quality people that you've hand selected to bring on your team for, for more important reasons than what's on a piece of paper. Oftentimes people tell me, Mitch, but their resume said this. I don't give a flip what the resume said when it comes to a certain point because the resume can be great, but if the person doesn't match, then it just doesn't match and that's okay. 
We've got to learn how to hire based on alignment, not on need, not out of desperation, but based on alignment. I told a leader a few weeks ago, you should be so good at recruiting that you constantly are building a Rolodex of future employees. And when you do that, you never hire out of desperation because you've got a Rolodex. I, I made a post on uh, LinkedIn the other day that if you recruit three to five people a day as a business leader, and recruiting should be one of your top priorities. If you recruit three to five people a day, five days a week, do the math, that's up to 15 to 25 people a week. If you do that every week, 52 weeks out of the year, let's give you some time off and say it's 40 weeks out of the year, <laughs> the bottom line is you have hundreds of people to choose from. And then what you find on third-party apps or through agencies just becomes a bonus. You're not dependent on those. So I focus on small business leadership, 30 million in revenue or 500 employees or less. And my argument is if you're running a team of 500 employees or less, you, your high performers and your customers should be personally recruiting every single person on your team because you and your high performers, you know what you need. You're going to strategize that. You're going to identify people, the barista at the coffee shop that always treats you great, the salesperson at the furniture store that always does a nice job, the mechanic at the shop that you take your car to. And you're going to ask these people, are you ready for another opportunity? Are you considering an opportunity or do you know someone who is? If you do that actively, hiring people will be the least of your problems. But the interesting thing is most business leaders don't strategically hire. They put very little of their time and energy into learning how to recruit or interview or hire. It's just happenstance. But if you want to set your business straight, and if you want to grow your revenue and your business, your organization, your nonprofit, whatever you're running and leading, if you want to grow that exponentially as quick as possible, learn how to recruit, learn how to hire, learn how to interview, and learn how to develop. So today we're talking about the real reason people work. So let's get into that for the next few minutes. The crazy thing is this story of data that I just shared with you. It's telling us a story that really isn't making sense. And so the big question is this, why are people really leaving? If one third of business leaders are telling us that hiring and retaining is their biggest barrier, it's our largest challenge. If over 50% of HR leaders and hiring managers are telling us that they need better training, then the question becomes, why are people leaving? Why are they leaving your entity to go work for someone else? Well, then we have to get into, we've got to kind of start top down, right? There's a real reason people work, but people are leaving. So why are they leaving? And then we have to back up and go, okay, so if they're leaving, what would happen if we identified the real reason people work and made that our mission in your business entity organization, you made it your mission to fulfill the real reasons people work. But we've gotta know what those are, right? You've gotta know what those real reasons are and I'm gonna give them to you. So you're about to get gold here. You're about to get the, the, the secret behind the curtain. These are the four real reasons, the larger reasons that people go to work. Number one, greater purpose. Believe it or not, believe it or not, every single person that works with you or for you is really working for greater purpose. And here's what I mean by that. It's built into our human DNA to want to be part of something larger than ourselves, a greater purpose, a greater calling to fulfill a passion. And when you can tie that greater purpose to their to work to everyday activity you are now fulfilling a deep human desire that every single one of us have i love this statement people take a job for money but they stay because of purpose there's actually a statistic that says when people leave a job and go to another company business organization they move for less than a 20% increase in pay. 
if someone's making $20 an hour, less than 20% is not much money. So what that tells us is that person is actually leaving because they are no longer fulfilled. The number one peop reason people work is greater purpose. And the number one reason someone will leave your organization for another one, greater purpose. Number two, the real reason people work is leadership they can trust. One of the top leaders to job dissatisfaction is lack of transparent leadership. When you, as a leader, hide behind the veil, you stay in your office, you're always on your phone, you're always on your tablet or computer, you don't have a connection with your team and with your people and with your, your department leads or your team leads. When you lack that connection, you're not a person they can trust. I have seen owners and business leaders walk into their own store and someone ask, who is that? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? I've seen that with my own eyes. I've heard it with my own ears. That an employee of this person doesn't even know who they are. Do you think that's leadership they can trust? When a team member just thinks that that person is a stranger walking in the door? Fortunately, years and years ago, two decades ago, I worked for a company. And I remember the first time I met the CEO unbelievable guy, still the CEO of that company, one of the most down-to-earth leaders ever. What's crazy is I, you know, that was back before social media and technology and everything. But what was interesting is the message of that CEO was so powerful that the first time I met that CEO, it was like I already knew him because people talked about him so much. He communicated so well. And even though I had never seen him in person, the first time he walked through my door, I knew exactly who that was. That's great leadership. And that is leadership that you can trust. So if you, if you wanna stop the door on people walking out of your organization to go to someone else, then be a leader they can trust. The number three reason that people work, the real reason people work is appreciation. I said a minute ago that we all have this innate human desire to be a part of something greater than ourselves. Every single one of us do. We also have something wired in us that really feeds off of appreciation. It's nice to know that someone recognizes you. It's nice to be seen. It's great to hear someone that's above you in the ecosystem of work come down to your level and say, Mitch, great job today. I appreciate your effort. That is fuel that will fan the flame of excellence. Appreciation is fuel that will fan the flame of ex excellence. Positive reinforcement is the single most powerful action you can take. Positive reinforcement is the single most powerful action you can take because those words of affirmation, those words of appreciation, or even the acts of appreciation, buying your people a cup of coffee on Fridays, buying them lunch, writing a handwritten thank you note to your employees or their family, saying how much you appreciate what they do for your organization, doing little creative things that cost you little to nothing except time and energy is the fuel that will fan the flame of excellence. If you don't show appreciation, they're gonna find someone who does. And as soon as they find someone who does, they're gonna be walking out your door. So the real reason people work is appreciation. And lastly, the real reason people work is mentorship. Listen to this story. 93% of employees would stay at a company longer if they were given the opportunity and their careers were invested in. So let me rephrase that a little bit. I didn't say it very well, but 93% of employees. So the majority of people working would stay at a company longer if that company invested in the future of that employee, their career, their education, their opportunity. No one wants to work at a place that they have no opportunity to grow. No one wants to work at a place where they have no opportunity to move up. It's hopeless. There's an ancient saying that says, where there is no hope, the people die. And when you talk about mental health and emotional health and spiritual health, and we talk about that a lot in my new book, How to Hire and Keep Great People, really what we're talking about is the spirituality of the workplace. 
And spirituality is so founded on hope. The ability to think that something greater awaits. And not just awaits, but knowing that I have the opportunity to achieve that. It's really in the opportunity to achieve that hope comes to life. And so if you want to be a leader that people can trust, if you want to build a culture that doesn't have a problem hiring, if you want to build a culture that has incredibly high performers or great service-oriented people or people with positive attitude, a place that positivity and energy is just exuding, then you better learn how to be a mentor and you better learn how to invest in the careers, education, and opportunity of your people. And there are a lot of great creative ways you can, you can do that. That can be very achievable. You don't have to pay for everyone's college. You can do something smaller. Or maybe you could pay for everyone's college. A lot of companies do that as well. The bottom line is find a way to mentor people. Set up a program so that when they walk in the door every day, they have that hope of achievement, that something is possible, and it's just not stagnant every day single day. People want an opportunity and that opportunity better be related to appreciation, leadership, and greater purpose because those are the real reason people work. Do they need to make money? Yes. But the data has shown us over and over and over again for decades on end, for as long as studies have been taken and people have been asked questions and publications have happened. The story tells us the truth. And the truth is people don't stay for money. They stay when they're appreciated. They stay when they have great leadership. They stay when they can be mentored and they stay when they have greater purpose. So if you want to build your all, your all-star team, if you want to build a culture that is empowering, then you better learn to show some gratitude and you better learn to appreciate people and you better set up a mentorship program that gives people hope. If you create these opportunities for people, I promise you, you will have zero problem keeping your team together and attracting more people than you could ever, ever hire. If you're ready to take your team to the next level, reach out to us. Make sure you spread the word on The Mitch Gray Show. You can check out our website, MitchGrayMedia.com, to find out more about how you can grow your team and to learn the real story of what's taking place. But before any of that, make sure you go order my new book, How to Hire and Keep Great People. I'm so excited to get this in your hands. I'm so excited to help you learn how to lead well and to reach, reach your potential as a leader. Thanks for listening to The Mitch Gray Show Instagram. Thanks for tuning in live, and we will talk to you soon.